This is a JTP Audio podcast. Sometimes talking with friends feels like role playing. Sometimes it feels like combat. Join us at the round table and roll initiative. This is Curmudgeons and Dragons. All right, hello and welcome. Episode two of Curmudgeons and Dragons. How are you guys doing? You know, Delightful. Not, not terrible, good. I'll tell you what. Well, that's that's just great. It's <laughs> it's good when things are good. Welcome back to the round table. Uh, this is Jason. Who else we got? Jack's over here hanging out with the cat. Ahoy, this is Josie. Justin. All right. Are you sure? Is here. <laughs> Justin. He had, a, he, had, he had to find himself. Is is present. He did an investigation check and he found himself. <laughs> So on the table for today's episode, we want to build some characters together. So we got a few different takes. Uh, Today, we're going to do Wolverine or Logan, depending on which movie you watch. Moody boy. You guys got your Wolverines ready? Yeah. Or, or, you know, or James, depending on what era. Depending on on how far back in the conversation. What if I just named him Mr. Angie Man? Oh, he is pretty Angie. Go uh, Pokey Boy. Mm -hmm. Just little Mr. Stabby Man. (laughs) He is a little dude, like uh, Josie, He's my just, height. Uh, We're the same size. I'm four foot tall nothing? enough. Fuck you. <laughs> I'm tall enough to be Wolverine. Wolverine is five foot three. Um, and with the adamantium, he is 300 pounds. Oh, I gave him a little bit of height. I was being generous. I thought he was shorter than that, actually. I thought he was five foot flat. I thought he was taller. I was I was clocking him. So the way I want to do it was I didn't really want to look at him as a person, and I haven't really remembered the comics in a while. So I just went off of like what I thought it was, like when you get your mom to name Pokemon kind of thing. All right. <laughs> I knew absolutely nothing I realized about Wolverine other than he's got a nice costume and he's got little stabbies on his hands that come out. He's of got his a hand. lot of like, nice costumes. I just I like knew very base information. I've never seen one of the Wolverine movies. I don't know if I've seen X-Men. I don't think I've seen X-Men. I'm actually like a little bit more. Of a DC gal. Oh boy. All right. I know. Well, some you know, some sins, side. some sins can't be forgiven. So there, there's a, there's three X-Men movies, a couple of um, uh, X-Men movies after that. Then there's three Wolverine movies. There's two of them. You should stay far away from. And then one you absolutely need to watch. Hey man, if, the Wolverine's if, it, okay. if it has Wolverine in the title, skip it. Okay. But go no, watch the Logan. Wolverine was all right. The Wolverine's okay. <sighs> I don't know. Go watch Better Logan, than though. origins. Yeah. Go watch, go watch Logan. It's fantastic. Good. You know, it's like people say, don't watch one, two, and three, but you're going to go back and watch the prequels. They're not terrible, but they're all right. I mean, go watch them. But it gives yeah, at least you, watch them once. Like, but definitely watch, like, well, watch Logan twice to make up for it. That's fair. Like, okay. there's apparently a lot of stuff in Wolverine's lore that, like, yeah, everything is canon because this is a multiverse. And he just, something, I I tried so hard to read so much in such a short period of time. The word, the word canon in any kind of comic universe is so fuzzy. Because they can well, do whatever they want now. Yeah, they re- they they kill people and bring them back and retcon and just change oh. things and just like Superman there's all sorts of things. So, for me. so these are these are all no matter what version of Wolverine it is, these are the, all the canonical versions of Wolverine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, they say if you say something's true and enough people believe that it's true, it's true. It's like you the internet; something? nothing's wrong on the internet. Yeah, if exactly. you say something's true and then you make a comic about it, it's oh it's God. canon. So yeah, wait, if that it's on Nigerian the internet, prince porn really wants it. to pay for my yeah. college. Yeah. Yes, and there's hot singles in my area. Of course there mm-hmm. are. I'm in your area. And then all it takes is one pill. And this game right. <laughs> will make it come in five seconds. <laughs> We've all been on the same websites. Yep. Some has browsers, some has talent. Mm-hmm. Let's uh let's roll up, see who's gonna do their character. Why are first. you outing me, Jason? <laughs> <laughs> no, he said talent, talent, talent. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're just such a pretty boy. <laughs> I'm rolling a D20. I don't know about you guys. Okay. I'll roll a D20. I'll roll a digital D20 on dndbeyond.com. That's what I'm doing. I got that eight. Well, I'm doing mine on uh, google.com. Oh. I'm doing mine. uh, I got the D20 app on my stream deck here. (laughs) I got an 18. So, wait, am I the only one that brought a real die? I have a thousand of them, but. I mean, they're right here. Mine are in the other room. I also have a computer in front of me. That's true. I didn't install the D20 app on the stream deck. I have like all of my notes on Wolverine, the handwritten. Like I'm an analog gal. Nerd. Oh my goodness. I know. I'm sorry. Nerds. I have a binder with all of my stuff. Quit being such a nerd and tell me about your X-Men character in D&D. No, I don't want to go first. <laughs> I got an eight. 
I think I might I got go a first. seven. I got a five. I got an, I got five. an 18. Jack's 18. Big Jack is going first. <laughs> two for Jack, two. T- tell me about your Wolverine build. All right. So I liked the idea of pre adamantium Wolverine. Like right after he was like, what are these things coming out of my hands? And they were just bones. Yeah, back so when they were straight I, up bones. Just bones, man. So the I claw, made him the claws a, were always uh, there. They were always there. But I made him a half orc and I just rolled him as a level 10. So he's a male half orc. And I made him a monk because I kind of like the idea of Wolverine, you know, having unarmed strikes. And I just made like slight adjustments to it. So I put in a lot of like yeah, I mean, a classic lot of D&D stuff with a little homebrew spin on it. Um, I just feel like the unarmed strikes were the best way to characterize him pre adamantium with not giving him too many bonuses. Because for the most part, he's punching you, but he's just punching you with bones in his hands. So he's still going to feel those a lot more than the adamantium. So I also liked uh, hair forks a lot because of their their relentless endurance. I kind of, you know, like Wolverine can't die kind of. So relentless endurance was a good D&D way of saying, you know, when you're reduced to zero, people not killed, you can pop back up at one every long rest. So it kind of gives them that like, I can't die kind of thing. Um, so for my stats, I rolled uh, 20 on strength, 13 on dex, 15 on con, uh, 10 on intelligence, 11 on wisdom, and a 6 on charisma. The way I kind of built him out was a uh, you know strong, agile fighter, kind of like how he is uh, normally. Um, I, I kind of didn't give as much of intelligence and wisdom. I might have switched my uh, dex score with that just because I kind of like the idea that Wolverine is quiet, but he's not a dumb person. He might not have like a ton of common sense when he's running in, but he for sure isn't a dumb person. I gave him proficiencies in acrobatics, uh, athletics, intimidation, investigation, and survival. I, he, I mean, for classic things, I just, you know, weapon-wise, I just gave him unarmed strikes. So his hit DC is nine and his damage is... I gave him two D6 plus five just because in when you're starting at level 10, your unarmed strike is only one D6 plus five. So I threw an extra D6 of just like, hey, I'm punching with bones kind of stuff. Because I'd have to imagine they're your bones and it's going to hurt, but it's still going to hurt like hell to the other person if you're getting punched with a sharp bone. I also I gave think him, so, yeah. And there are weapons that are made I also out kind of, of too. Yeah, like it's going to hurt. But I, I kind of threw in there too that every time he makes an unarmed strike, he takes minus one HP. Just because I, in the beginning, like when he, he feels that, like when he's using them, like you can tell that he feels them. So I kind of like the idea of having a drawback to using them just because you know you're gonna feel it if you're punching someone with your bones uh throughout leveling so you're level 10 so you can pick either feet proficiency feet proficiency so i did one in uh proficiencies and just gave him you know the acrobatics and athletics and the feat that i chose was grappling because i kind of like him as a you know close combat fighter so i gave him grappling for that um when you pick uh orc you also you know i have like stillness of mind as a monk and unarmed strikes and wholeness of body. So I can regain automatic HP every time I rest, which is kind of like him, you know, taking a breather, Mm -hmm. regaining like his strength and stuff like that. Stillness of mind is you can use an action to end an effect on yourself. That's causing you to be charmed or frightened. I kind of feel like Wolverine was always like a big, you know, kind of like you can't be intimidated by things kind of person. Like he's not, I've never known Wolverine to really run away from a fight. No, you should run face first into a fight. Usually. Yeah. Usually he's like, Hey, I'm going to block. I'm going to break this fall with my face. Um, as a monk, you also get flurry of blows, so I can make two unarmed strikes as a bonus action because you know when he's in there, he's just slashing, just just hacking and slashing away. For languages, I just caught, th- thought it was like a cool idea just to give him. So he's common dwarvish and orc, obviously being half orc. Uh, dwarvish is the language I chose, and I also chose deep speech because I kind of like the idea of Wolverine as like sort of like an alien entity, like you know, because he's a mutant. So you got to think mutants are kind of like these alien entities. So it's kind of like a mutant speech, you'd call it. Deep speech is usually like an alien or otherworldly being that you can talk to. And I kind of like mutants having that language is like their language. Um, and that's pretty much my guy. Um, I didn't really like concentrate too much on equipment or um, stuff like that. Uh, I did give him a few features and traits that I kind of, you know, enjoyed. Um, his monastic tradition, I went just way of the open hand. I know in Critical Role, there's the way of the cobalt. That's more of like a kind of like magic-y thing. And I just really always pictured Wolverine as like a hand-to-hand kind of dude. So, you know, way of the open hand just gives you like deflect missiles and open hand technique, which is basically something you can do on Flurry or Blow. So just more of him just being in close, punching, hacking, and slashing. Um, he gets extra strikes and uh, extra attacks being a monk. For racial traits, as a half-orc, you get dark vision, and that's kind of fitting for him, you know, being like kind of that animal, you know, like in the darkness. Definitely. Uh, he gets men- I gave him menacing, so you get a proficiency in the intimidation skill, because I feel like he... Uh, out of all the mutants, he's kind of relies on that, just being like, "Hey, I'm gonna murder you, and you can't murder me." So that's that's a pretty intimidating thing to me. Naturally. Uh, the other thing I like too is um, 
So kind of rolling into pre-adamantium and adamantium. Half-Force Monk gets a thing called Savage Attack. So when I score a critical hit roll, one of the dice an additional time, I can add extra damage. So I kind of like the idea of like he's starting to learn how to use his claw. So every time he becomes more proficient or scores like a critical hit, he's adding more damage to it. So he's becoming more proficient with using, like that. using those things. Yeah. For his description, just real quick for background, I gave him the uh, haunted one background. So a quick description of that is those who look in your eyes can see that you face unimaginable horror and that you are no stranger to darkness. But they might fear you. Commoners will extend you every courtesy and do their utmost to help you. Unless you have shown yourself to be a danger to them, they will even take up arms and fight alongside you should you find yourself facing the enemy alone. And I feel like that worked out really well for him because it kind of shows like, hey, he's been through some shit. But at the same time, like people are still willing to fight next to him because they realize how like staunch of a person he is. So the haunted one kind of fit pretty well. And I gave him chaotic neutral. I mean, as Wolverine, he kind of just does whatever he wants, whatever he thinks is best. Doesn't really listen to uh, things too well. Um, I put him as obviously a uh, male. I gave him yellow eyes just because I was looking at my cat when I made it. I thought it'd be cooler if he had yellow <laughs> eyes rather than his normal eye color. Medium size, rugged skin. Uh, I put him at 30 for this. I put him weighing about 200 pounds uh, and I gave his height 5'10". So I was a little generous with the small boy height. I made him more of an average very, boy height. That's very generous. Yeah, I gave him an extra seven inches and that's, uh, that's a lot of inches. You know, that's, uh, <laughs> that's, a, that's a big difference. Uh, personality traits real quick. I I'll just went through, um, rather than write stuff down, I kind of like the idea of seeing what was given to me and just seeing how well I could actually make D&D traits fit Wolverine mm -hmm. rather than like handwriting them in. So personality traits I gave, uh, I don't run from evil, evil runs from me. I live for the thrill of the hunt. I don't talk about the thing that torments me. I'd rather not burden any others with my curse. And I expect danger around every corner. For his ideals, I gave him, I have a dark calling that puts me above the law, which is a chaotic calling. And then I gave him, I'm a monster that destroys other monsters and anything that gets in my way, which in D&D &D is an evil. But I kind of put that more as like, a, if you're leaning towards like chaotic neutral, because I, know, I get that's evil. Like you think you're a monster and you destroy everything, are, but yeah, those are guidelines. It just seems anyway. like yeah, it's just such like a far swing for evil. Um, Bonds, I gave him my torment drove away the person I love. I try to win back the love I've lost, which is pretty true to the Wolverine lore. His wife, um, and then flaws are I feel no compassion for the dead. They're the lucky ones, and I have an addiction. So flaws, I kind of looked at later on in life, where you know, as he kind of aged and was getting like outliving people and living with his pain and stuff, he kind of almost in a weird way always wished death upon himself. I mean, you can get that towards like the end of his you know, line of when he finally goes, like you could definitely tell he was like, I'm okay with going just after all he's been through. Um, and the addiction is, you know, he's Wolverine, he smokes cigars, he drinks booze, he does whatever he wants. So it's just kind of like the Wolverine -y thing. You can't and die. You might as well smoke and drink. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I'm going to die and I do that, but I mean, that's kind of like what I built him out as. Um, I, I, like I said, I, I used uh D and D beyond and rather than like, I put in like some homebrew stuff just because the unarmed strike, I felt like is a little underpowered for what Wolverine was. So I just gave him an extra bump on damage, but I wanted to use D and D beyond and the actual D and D five E stuff and some of the extraneous stuff as much as I could to truly build like a Wolverine character. So I didn't want to like dip too much in a homebrew. I had other ideas for things that were more like homebrewy kind of stuff. Like if I was leaning more towards like the adamantium and things like that, but I felt like half orc monk just kind of fit him best as, you know, pre adamantium. Yeah. It's a totally playable character too. Yeah, with so like, it's, it's saved on my uh, D&D Beyond, so I'll make sure to share it when we're done. Yeah. Um, I like how you basically took like his whole story, like you went from the Bone Claws to all the way to like later on years when he's like, you no, know, reflecting on things and uh, gets a drinking problem. Yeah, I think if you're going to build out the lore of your character, I mean, I kind of, I, I could have gone like pre stuff, but in my opinion, pre stuff for Wolverine is exciting, but. It's not as exciting. It's kind of a classic, like, I was a tough guy, now I'm a tougher guy. But he really matured as a character later on in the series, so I wanted mm -hmm. to focus on that as well. Uh, going Monk gives you some cool stuff, too, that uh, not only is decent for playing him, but to really flesh out the flavor of Wolverine also. You get the, uh, you get the unarmored, uh, unarmored movement, um, mm -hmm. so he gets to stay fast. Uh, because he doesn't typically wear armor. Like uh, the most you'll see him wear is like, you know, leather Spandex. biker jacket, which kind of leather off. Yeah. But I wouldn't even call that armor. Well, um, if I was doing like during adamantium, I would have given him kind of armor because he would have had that coursing through him for his bones. But since I went pre adamantium, I, that's why I went like more of like the monk build with with well, armor. Monk also, also, gives you, monk also has unarmored defense, which gives you uh, an extra mm -hmm. AC boost when not wearing yeah. armor. Yeah, and he gets unarmed that's strike really too, which is kind of cool. So I can like punch, kick, headbutt, like you know, do whatever I want, which is my strength modifier plus one. Mm -hmm. So it's like. In a pinch, I'm still kind of like my whole body is a weapon. Yeah. Well, wait, you guys wouldn't consider the uh, the yellow and black spandex of the comics as light armor? <laughs> I guess it'd be, it would be light armor, light and tight armor. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, he's proficient in tight armor. 
No, no, it's Wolverine's profession in tight armor. I tell you <laughs> but, what. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, no, I think I think that build, like way of the Opea Monk, I think that's definitely uh, one of the more faithful ways to to adapt Wolverine. Totally um, as far as like combat style and stuff mm-hmm. too into into D and D, I think the only thing like you you have a great build there. I think the only thing I would have done differently was um, as opposed to like home brewing uh, organic weapons. I mean, it's a monk, so you can reskin anything. So maybe just give him like you know three pointed punch daggers or or something. It, it can fundamentally deal the uh, the same amount of damages mm-hmm. as that's like, went from more, like, more of a lore standpoint of like it's he's still using his hands like he's not really using like a weapon i thought about giving him like because there are brewed up like uh claw weapons and stuff like that like fist weapons yeah but to me it was like just being able to retract and unattract like so i have two unarmed strikes i have the 1d6 plus five which would be his regular unarmed strike and then the special one that i threw in was 2d6 plus five plus every time you hit with it you take minus one hit point so that kind of was like the if the claws are out like you're still feeling it it's a lot of getting extra damage yeah Yeah, it's a lot of damage and and you're taking yeah the hit from your skin slight drop i I think it's pretty that's pretty balanced homebrew i think yeah Mm -hmm. for sure i could definitely 2d6 without a a drawback is kind of like for an unarmed strike it's kind of crazy so that's why i want to put the drawback in of like if you're punching with your bones you're probably going to feel it a little bit yeah, especially if you're getting like at least three attacks, even without spending a key point. Just like the tiniest. Yeah, bit. so if you if you do like flurry of blows or anything like that, like you're taking like on a turn, you could take like five or six damage depending on how you roll your turn and hit yeah. stuff. I mean, and that plays into the whole berserker end too. That's that was a, mm-hmm. that was a huge night Wolverine, more especially in the video games. Yeah, that's kind of why I like the idea too of the. Um, so when I went um, half work, just getting relentless endurance. It's like yeah, you're doing drawbacks to yourself, but you can't really even kill yourself. Like you could still punch if you're at like one hit point and bring yourself back up. Yeah, once. That's awesome. Yeah, you can do it this many times. One. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But hey, Same. once the once the better done. Yeah. And one, and one boss fight may be all you need. <laughs> yeah. Tell the boss, hey, hold on, I got a quick long rest. Can you just hang right. on for a second. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jack, that was awesome. Yeah, it was nice. great. Appreciate uh, it. Who's up next? I believe it is me. Josie and Nate. Hey. Alrighty. So I, like I was saying, I yeah, t- know. Tell us what you learned about Wolverine. I learned, <laughs> I learned, I learned so much about Wolverine. If you can. He's a guy. He's a dude. So um, according to the Marvel biography, he is born in the late 19th century. So I put his birth around like 1885 in the movies. I think he's born in 1845. I yeah, didn't seem it's, late it's enough before for the civil me. war. Yeah, yeah. I think they just did that for that cutscene of him running through with uh, saber tooth. Yeah. Oh yeah, you got to have Wolverine saber saber tooth in Civil War. Yeah. Like he was raised by wealthy parents, and then one day the groundskeeper kills his father, so that triggers his like first rage, where his mutation manifests, and he kills the groundskeeper, who admits in his final moments that he is his real father. Oh. Which you know sounds pretty traumatic. It's not possible. possible. No. Uh, like, That's a different episode, guys. We'll do Luke. We'll do Luke later. <laughs> <laughs> he slashed up the face of Logan's son and his son's friend, Dog, which is a fun name for a person. He got into cage fighting at the quarry, and he got stronger as he got better control over his mutation. But also became more violent and accidentally killed Rose and went lived in the wood. He went and lived in the woods as a feral beast for a time, which, you know, as you do. Like you do. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone's um, been there. But it, I'm there right now. He was described also as a partial amnesiac because of the healing abilities that he has just kind of like build over that trauma so he doesn't have to remember it. But I, I built him in a way that like, even though he doesn't remember his past, he knows it wasn't a great one. So I actually built him as a boring old variant human barbarian fighter. Cause I kind of focused on the fact that like he was in every major conflict of the 20th century, like every war that happened, he fought in it. He played whatever he needed, a soldier, a criminal mercenary and said, I'm the best there is at what I do, but what I do best isn't very nice. And like that for me really just screams barbarian fighter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I also did the haunted one background because, again, like it's a good fitting background. It, it's 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 just that it's, one. It's almost too right obvious, thing. but yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's it's a good that's one for the, him. Yeah, it just it fits so well. Thanks, I actually Tom. had I had to force myself not to pick that one. <laughs> <laughs> I had him as either a chaotic neutral or true neutral. I think when he ran into the woods to live as a feral beast, he really was a true neutral kind of entity. Like he yeah, doesn't, for sure. yeah. 
for his barbarian uh, berserker. Like he's described as a berserker, but also like I thought that the totem path was a little better. The path of the totem warrior, just because yeah. like he has those heightened animal like like senses and things. So I have his totem spirits being the bear. While raging, you have resistance to all damage except psychic damage. And then yeah, that's that's perfect. Mm-hmm. And then the aspect of the beast tiger, you gain proficiency in two skills from the following lists, athletics, acrobatics, stealth, and survival. I did acrobatics and stealth. I have him as a very constitution and strength heavy. His con is 18, strength 16, dex 14, and then intelligence is nine, wisdom is 13, and charisma is eight. His characteristics and like description and stuff, I had it kind of true to the comic book, like black hair, blue eyes, skin colored skin, um, I put him at 130. <laughs> what? Skin ah, skin. the classic skin colored skin. <laughs> well, yes, the skin reminds me of skin. I, like, yes, well, can you pass me the skin color crayon, please? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, there's a variety of flesh tones, but it's not like he's blue or green or purple or anything, which are valid skin tones. Mm-hmm. He's ambiguous. Yeah. He's yeah. a Cana- Canadian white guy. He's, a, yeah, he's just a, Canada. a generic Canadian dude. Who also punches real good. So a Canadian dude. Yeah. Yeah. This so I gave Canadian him actually <laughs> I gave him the I gave him the feet to With a little brawler. less flannel. hmm Yeah, he's I mean, he spent some time as a logger in some stories. So like I think he wears flannel every once in a while as a treat. I think I mean he Dexter indulges. wears flannel when he's a logger, so That's right. would, we don't talk about logger Dexter. Are you sure? With that facial hair though. So I gave him. We don't talk about tree Dexter. <laughs> <laughs> um, I gave him tavern brawler. I didn't really do any homebrew stuff. I wanted to do something just from like the player's handbook, but wow. I did give his unarmed strike like a plus one piercing. I thought that was like yeah, fine. That's a that's a fair way of adding it because that's the thing. There's no real like, hey, my bones are weapons roll. So you kind of got to like adjust. You got to do mm-hmm. something with it. Yeah. But like I made him very acrobatic and athletic. I gave him a little up in perception. I gave him a bonus in survival because he did a whole bunch of that. Just like we all might have. Anytime it was like, you want to give a bonus in survival? I'm like, uh, yes, I think I think you want to survive better. I guess it's not very very useful in the game, but it's great. But but (laughs) it makes sense for his character. It makes sense. Absolutely. It does. Um, the languages I have him speak are common, draconic, primordial, and undercommon. Um, I gave him proficiency with carpenter tools, but I That's I learned water. yeah, it would make sense. I learned mm-hmm. real Wolverine, according to Marvel, has um, immunity to most poisons, drugs, and diseases. So I I gave him natural like not immunity, but like resistance. Um, That's why I rolled that okay. work. Yeah. Well, pin a rose on your nose. <laughs> Uh, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, You're doing I, great. I gave him a bunch of language proficiencies because I discovered that he is fluent in Cheyenne, Chinese, Japanese, Korean, Lakota, Russian, and Spanish, and knows passably French, Thai, and Vietnamese. Hmm. And I guess if you're alive for that long, it's a lot of Rosetta Stone. You can yeah, take. he's been a yeah. he's been alive for like he lived in years. He lived yeah. he lived in Japan for a while. He's got a, a son in Japan. Spoilers. Oh, there was a whole like huge like well, Japanese Wolverine arc. Arc about yeah. that, yeah. That I completely forgot about and did not address at all in my build. <laughs> I believe they're called Tanuki over there. <laughs> <laughs> That's a specific something in there. <laughs> but um I didn't realize that he spent the first hundred years of his life without the adamantium skeleton. Like that mm-hmm. wasn't until the 70s or something. So like, that's why he's only got the plus one. I did kind of build this pre-adamantium, but with yeah. like some stuff about post-adamantium him in mind. That's more, I don't know. I wasn't as interested in that. I think there's a lot to work with post-1970 for Wolverine when it comes to specifically building a D&D character like that's where most of his haunted past and stuff is. It addresses a lot of the things that you look to, to build a character. Yeah. Yeah, sure. I mean, you got like 200 years of a guy's life to deal with. I mean, yeah, it's 
It's a lot of time. And also adapting the adamantium skeleton into a, a character in D and D in general is, I think it's not hard to make that broken. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like with characters like Wolverine, it's really easy to just make him super OP. Yeah. He's got a lot of flaws as a character though. Like there's, yeah. there's like ways it, to balance him. Like when it without comes going to too nuts. interacting with other groups of people, like that's what the low charisma is for to be like, yo, yeah. like we should work together. And he's just like, no, nah, I don't do that. You don't want that. I don't want that. Yep. I see a New York taxi driver. <laughs> <laughs> It's a Canadian taxi driver. Or like ah, any first time it. player. <laughs> hey, I'm logging here. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think we're looking at this you know, from a purely combat stance, which is super easy to do. Yeah. But um but the the role play stuff is where he's really gonna balance out. Where like, uh-huh. you know, it's if you're playing him correctly, people aren't gonna like him very much. He's he's supposed to yeah. be abrasive and yeah. uh and not he's, no not he's anybody, not, not like he's anybody. not a fun person to hang out with, really, unless you like to watch a guy chug six pints of beer then break the mug over somebody's head for looking at him funny like if you like that guy uh hottie alert yeah <laughs> she's like ooh hello sir let me sit at your table <laughs> drunk and angry are you my dad just kidding He's <laughs> so um a, scru- a scruffy drunk guy that's just us yeah that's that's three out of four people in here right <laughs> me jason so- josie <laughs> you say sorry, <laughs> Justin. <laughs> it's me, the scruffy I'm, big. I'm only one of those right now. I just want to be drunk. drunk. Yes, drunk, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I Listen, am, if you're gonna fact, play as Wolverine, am, you gotta fact, go all the way yeah. into Wolverine, okay? Yeah, yeah, I smoke a cigar it ain't scruffy this. and it ain't guy. Yeah, I'm four beers deep. I'm Wolverine. <laughs> Wolverine. <laughs> I did not get the memo that we were supposed to be channeling the character as well. She's not gonna role to the, play, okay? Role play doesn't stop just because you're not playing a game right now. I have a lovely key lime yogurt. Okay, Wolverine. <laughs> Something Wolverine would never say. <laughs> so as a barbarian, he's got unarmored defense, reckless attack, danger sense. He can talk to animals, which is a fun little thing. I don't think real Wolverine can do that. That's just a perfect yeah, they don't, they don't talk. They don't talk back. No. Mm. He just looks at the deer and he's like, fuck you. And they're just like, excuse me. Well, in in one of those Wolverine movies that Jason told you not to watch, um, he actually does have, you know, seemingly a very social special moment with the dying bear. So it seems like he has at least some affinity for hanging out with animals. So that's a great scene. Thank you very much. Exactly. (laughs) And then he goes in a bar and just pokes people. (laughs) <laughs> just a little, a little hand ever does. Stabby. Just, yeah, he just pokes go, people. Yeah, bars yeah, just goes to the bar. People. He's basically, he's, he's honestly just old school Facebook is immune. He's just poking people <laughs> and you really don't want it. 2011 Facebook. Oh mm-hmm. my God. <laughs> just poking people left and right. Just I poking people all, all the time. I forgot all about that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Somewhere now the, now the hidden Facebook's in their just interface, a, just a cesspool. it's all of those. Oh my God. All of those unanswered pokes. I think Facebook, you can wave Facebook now. used to just be annoying. Now it's annoying and racist. Uh, especially if you had your family it's real great <laughs> they're like love you but and I'm like to- just just stop yep. it love you Yep. see you later don't continue I'll see you at the next funeral it's fine um, my Facebook's mostly Mr. <laughs> Potato Head shit right now yeah I think that's uh, everyone's Facebook I'm just, I'm just confused by I don't know that's a different podcast what gender is your potato Jason sneak um, peek for episode 3 it's an all Mr. Potato Head podcast from here on out oh my we're God. adapting Mr. Mr. Potato, Potato Head as a character Anybody have stat blocks on Mrs. Potato Head? Yeah. <laughs> I can find some real fast, probably. <laughs> did I'm I sure talk it's about on dndbeyond.com. Fighter features at all? I don't think They're I They're not did. sponsoring us. I don't know why you keep doing that. <laughs> <laughs> because maybe that. one day they will. Listen, I tried getting this episode sponsored by D&D Beyond, and they actually got back to me very quickly. They were very nice. Um, they only have one sponsorship program, and it's only open if your name is actually Matt Mercer. Oh, I can, I mean, I can my change name. it. Yeah. <laughs> Like so if I legally change my name to Matt Mercer, will they sponsor us? They might, um, but unfortunately, right now we don't qualify. Uh, however, uh, we are, are going to tag them in the post, and they'll uh, they'll probably share it around. Yeah. And hopefully, they won't listen to the yeah, episode yeah. first, and they'll just, they'll just share it blindly um, <laughs> <laughs> because of that. Oh, yeah. So this episode just, is dedicated to Matt Mercer and dndbeyond.com. Please love me, Matt. <laughs> uh, we're not being sponsored, however. Did we uh, discuss? No, we we haven't even launched the Patreon yet. So I can't even I can't even tell tell people that they can sponsor us because right now they can't. If you want to just like find me and hand me ten bucks, that'd be cool. Then we can go buy 
D and D Beyond yeah, books I'll... and add them to our account. That's right. We don't have enough. I I have most of them. I only have the player's handbook. Oh, thank you. I tried I real sent, hard. I just sent you illegal PDFs. I'm glad you didn't open them. Shh, 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 That's a cr- uh, allegedly, <laughs> allegedly, allegedly. You're going you're going to jail, bro. I only have the player's handbook on D and D Beyond because that's all I thought I needed. You too you can sponsor a Josie by buying her more stuff on D and D Beyond. Yes, not just on D and D Beyond. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, give us your uh, Amazon wish list. Oh my your, God! Yes, please buy me nice away. things. That's all I want. If you buy me nice headphones, I will <laughs> wear them for you. There you go, um, Josie. That was awesome. Yeah, it was great. Thank you. I tried. And uh, and thank you for filling in some of the uh, Wolverine history that I was missing because uh, I've not studied. Yes, of I've course. Not studied him. That's. I said last time, I think that I'm going to school for writing. I'm also going to school for criminology, so I cannot help but just profile people. <laughs> it is a curse. Uh, so, I think I'm up next. I believe you are. Here we go. All right. So um, we got a couple of overlaps here, but I think we took them in slightly different directions. Again, using D&D Beyond, which is going to go in order here. I like the order that they that they have you do this in. So Wolverine is a uh, he's a mutant. This is this is the whole thing with with X Men. So what is what is a mutant but a variant human? Like on a very like literal level, is uh, humans so with, uh, with, with mutated genes that made him so, a mu- uh, human. Very human. human. We were talking about uh, putting him into dwarf or even halfling because he is very short and hairy. Oh, we'll um, get there. But uh, I decided to go variant human. It gives us a couple of cool options that'll put us into the right lore. I did have him uh, learn dwarvish because if he's going to look like a dwarf, he might as well talk like one. And what is it? And what is a Canadian accent but the dwarvish language? I just, okay. Just, <laughs> okay. Yeah. I get behind that. That makes sure. sense. Listen, I mean, like Tolkien kind of like put the idea in our head that dwarves are Scottish, but they're. That's, that is not that's what Tolkien the intended the, the dwarves to be. <laughs> yeah. I, the Tolkien came right continent. out and said what the dwarves were. <laughs> and it was not okay. <laughs> no, no. But now they're Canadian, so it's okay now. We can make fun of them and not feel bad. Love a Canadian. <laughs> to all of our Canadian listeners, we love you. Are you guys aware that I'm actually half Canadian? Awesome. How- oh, well, the other half's pretty good. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> He's, that's why you're only half nice all the time. <laughs> Fuck you. It's half Canadian, <laughs> half, Wait, Canadian, half like, asshole. Is the half oh, Canadian yeah, was- Quebecois? Yes, it or- is. Of course. Okay. Yes, it is. Uh, all right. So, Giant Human gives you uh, gives you two ability store ability score increases. Uh, so, we gave him an, a, an extra point in Constitution and Strength. Gives you a free skill right at the top. So, I gave him Acrobatics, and uh, you also start with a feat. Uh, I gave him the Slasher feat, which gives you a plus one to Strength or Dex. I gave him a plus one to Dex. Once per turn, when you hit a creature with an attack that deals slashing damage, you can reduce the speed of the target by ten feet until the start of your next turn. And when you score a critical hit that deals slashing damage to a creature, you grievously wound it until the start of your next turn. The target has mm. disadvantage on all attack rolls. The idea here being that you know exactly where to slash to inflict the most damage. And uh, this guy's been slashing for 200 years. Oh, yeah, I know so exactly where to slash then. to deal yeah. the most damage. Yep. So I uh, definitely gave him a slasher. I put him on level nine and I kind of just kept adding levels until I felt he had all the stuff I wanted him to have. I could go level 10 and give him one more. Um, but I started with uh, three levels of fighter. Not only does that give him a couple extra proficiencies, I gave him a uh, history and intimidation. Uh, a guy that's been alive for 200 plus years and fought in the Civil War and every other war. He's got to be a historian because he lived it. I never and, really uh, that. Yeah, and, uh, and intimidation, uh, you know, he's a guy with claws and, they, uh, and a scruffy beard. Uh, he is known for being intimidating. So we gave him proficiency there. Uh, fighting style, I give him two weapon fighting, uh, so that when he slashes with both hands, he doesn't get disadvantage or he, he, he keeps his modifier rather. The most important thing here is that level one fighter, you get second wind once per turn. You can, uh, use a bonus action to heal, uh, one D 10 plus your fighter level. This is the closest I found to true regeneration in this game is the second wind ability. A lot, a lot of resiliences and we'll, we'll get to that in the barbarian, but this is the closest I found to actual regeneration. So uh, it was important to me that he had second wind. It works, yeah. Second level gives you action surge, so you can take additional action uh, once per short and long rest. And for the martial archetype on level three, I gave him the champion. Classic. Because that gives him the improved critical. Now he crits on 19 or 20, so he goes from a 5% to a 10% 
chance of crit, which seems uh, seems very fitting. Uh, so that's the three levels of fighter will get you, and then six levels of barbarian. Uh, obviously, we go into barbarian rage. This is his uh, his berserker unarmored defense gives him some uh, some additional armor class without having to actually wear armor. Uh, danger sense gives the uncanny you get the uncanny sense of when things nearby aren't as they should be, giving you an edge when you dodge away from danger. So you have an advantage on deck saving throws against effects that you can see, such as traps and spells, and uh, you can't be blinded, deafened, or incapacitated. That's nice. Yeah, literally spelling Pretty danger. For him. Then we get the third level. We get to choose primal path. I also went to warrior. I, 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 I just want to interject real quick, Jason. With a lenient DM, technically that means you can't be knocked unconscious either, because that is incapacitated. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I like the wording on that. Yes. <laughs> that's not, that's not bad. You can't be blinded, deafened, <laughs> or incapacitated. Yeah. So you can't be restrained or knocked unconscious. Do you want to go pure? Uh, do you want to go pure raw on that? Oh, that's incredible! Very Wolverine. If, if you're gonna, if, if you're gonna, if you have a rules lawyer in your party. <laughs> oh, we all have one. Lawyer. It's me. <laughs> uh, it's probably probably not me. I also went totem warrior. The first totem spirit I gave him was the bear, uh, which gives him uh, resistance to all damage except psychic, and sixth level. Gets a second aspect of the beast. We gave him wolf, which gives him the hunting sensibilities of a wolf. You can track other creatures while traveling at a fast pace. And you can move stealthily while traveling at a normal pace. Uh, which is great because roleplay wise, he does go rogue a lot. Uh, he'll he'll basically just bounce from the party. I almost built him as a rogue. I started I off by giving him at least one Ooh, level of rogue. I have another fun fact about him. Oh, please. He got the nickname Wolverine while cage fighting for the way that he fought. That that was a fun fact. Indeed. Nice. Fun fact of the day. The more the, you know. I I learned so much about <laughs> James the Wolverine Howlet, also known as Logan, literally yeah, yesterday. The, thing, the things I Googled weren't so weren't that informative. Google's a weird place to be sometimes. I yeah, mostly looked for handsome pictures of Hugh Jackman. <laughs> I mean, who if let's say you're gonna look up Wolverine that's valid. and a couple of shirtless pictures of Hugh Jackman slip in there. I mean, it's not my fault. Hey, Justin and I Justin and I have met Hugh Jackman. Don't tell me was that. I was I was in the same room as him. Yeah, we were, yeah, it's, it's the same thing. Was he shirtless? Listen, just let no. us be cool for a second. Right, well, then he you haven't shirtless. really met Hugh Jackman. <laughs> was he delightful? I heard he was nice. He he talked to one of one of our coworkers at the bar. I, I don't know about you, Jason. I didn't talk to him. Every, everything I heard about him was pleasant. Yeah, seems like a real swell. I was Canadian, so well, yeah. yeah. Is he? No, he's, he's Australian. Not, I mean, he's like Australian. Wolverine's Canadian. Oh, okay, no, yeah. Hugh Jackman's Australian. He yeah. Is. I got really confused for a second. I was like, wait a minute. Like, wait, that I mean, I can like, only that, think that of kind of the Wolverine I, back into like, that, it. That sounds plausible, but not right. Like, <laughs> I can only I, think of one person that hates Hugh Jackman. It's Ryan Reynolds. Like, or, yeah, he doesn't. He doesn't like him. He loves him. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I was going to go with Dr. Cox and Scrubs. Oh, yeah. He disdains <laughs> him as well. I'm doing a Scrubs rewatch right now. Shout out to fake doctors, real friends. <laughs> Bound Excellent podcast. podcast. Um, abilities I went with uh, one of the straight up point by and I went pure min max on this I went straight to strength 15 dex 15 con 15 and there's a kept intelligence wisdom and charisma at 8 uh, right. obviously strength dex and con uh, not only make him a better playable character but are, are very canonical with him uh, in, in, in line with his uh, with his character intelligence and wisdom and despite the fact that he has been alive for as long as he has he's still pretty like headstrong when it comes to when it comes to fighting and how to deal with problems. So he doesn't like, like he may be smart enough to know how to deal with them, but he's so like stubborn and headstrong that he'll just skip that part and just go right to acting before he thinks it out. So I thought the other thing his, is, is he's an amnesiac. So he forgets all of that. Stuff. Yeah. We forgot everything up to the weapon X program. Yes. Since then is his memory sharp. We'll get to that. In a second. Coming back. Let's see. Description. We all know what he looks like. Now, the background here is where we got fun. Uh, and I don't have the Strahd book on my D&D Beyond, so I had to Google this one. Um, in Strahd, there is a background called Dragon Casualty, uh, which if we reskin just a couple of things in here, just uh, just change some names, we get some excellent Weapon X background. And Justin looks very confused because he's running Strahd right now. I have now. been running Strahd for four and a half months, and is this I have the first no time idea what you're talking about. Beautiful. So the Dragon oh, Casualty I'm very background. I'm excited. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna read this verbatim. And by verbatim, it's gonna have a lot of Strahd stuff in it. So uh, we'll go back and reskin a couple of these names. Okay. When the maimed Virulins descended upon Flan, you were one of the unfortunate casualties of war. 
Captured during the initial assault, you have spent the last year of your life as a plaything of a capricious and malevolent overlord. While many of your fellow prisoners fell to the dragon's insatiable fury over the coming months, you and your fellow survivors were spared only for a worse fate as one of the dragon's magical experiments, leaving you and those who survived the torture uh, and those who dis, uh, survived the torture scarred and disfigured. What reasons the dragon had for releasing you few survivors, nobody knows. You only fear that those who died under his terrible claw were the lucky ones, and you and your fellow dragon scarred are doomed for a fate worse than death. I'm kind of seeing this as the Weapon X program. Jesus Christ. Um, with the main Virulence. Yeah, and, uh, uh, yeah. it works, yeah. And um, what was the name of the dragon? Um, ba -ba -ba, it was here Steve. somewhere. Yeah, there's a dragon name in there somewhere. But uh, I was going to change that to Striker. Steve the Dragon. This gives you proficiencies William in Stryker. intimidation and survival. It gives you two proficiencies. Is it, is it called um, the Maimed Virulence? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, I, I found it. I thought it. that was kind of like his, uh, oh, here it is, uh, uh, Vorgantrax. I like Forget Steve. Like Forget the main Steve for Steve is ruins. much better. Yeah, let's 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 go with Steve. Steve the uh, Dragon. Striker. He's uh, it's it's definitely Striker. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that so works this, way better. So this gives you uh, skill proficiencies in intimidation and survival. Steve the Striker. Um, two proficiencies based on parts of your origin, which we'll get to the table in a second. Um, equipment gives you a dagger, tattered rags, loaf of moldy bread. Uh, a small cast off scale belonging to Vergansharax will skin that to something that he stole from a striker, maybe a pen out of his pocket. I don't know. And your lifestyle. Is... Yeah. 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 Your own, your own dog tags. That's, that's actually the size of a scale. Your tool proficiency base is based on your occupation before the capture. Uh, and we can kind of go with different, a couple different op options here. All of your options are either dock worker and fisherman, tradesperson and merchant, uh, black fist soldier, an adventurer slash visitor, entertainer, scholar, healer, criminal, or unskilled laborer. Uh, what's interesting here is that whether you go with the soldier or the unskilled laborer, whether you're taking his uh, his military background or his logging background, either way, your, your tool proficiency is a gaming set, which is uh, at least a little interesting. Oh, okay. Uh, I was hoping. And it's <laughs> I think not, you it's, could have picked any of those, honestly, from how long he's been alive. Uh, I would not call him a scholar or an entertainer. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, or a tradesperson. You can pick almost any of those. Or a fisherman. You can if really you only watch pick two him of these. fight, <laughs> technically he's an entertainer. I guess. Yeah, yeah he's fished. He was in fighting times. pits. Yeah, um, put a fucker in a fighting pit. I'd watch the shit out of that. He gets a tool yeah. proficiency in gaming set because of this. Uh, in the Outlander background that I was going to give him, I was going to give him a proficiency in a loot because Josie, I don't know if you came across this in your research, but canonically, he's a bass player in a Toto cover band. That's a real. That's a that's a canon thing. I found it on on Marvel Wiki, and that's good. Yeah, that's wikis good are, are known for their reliability. <laughs> listen, listen, I, that's good enough for listen, me. Right? I choose to it's believe the wiki, that. Though. I choose to believe that. I believe that. <laughs> yeah, Jack, I what's, just, Jack, what's much, more fun? I what's hear more it. fun? Believing that he's a bass player in a Toto cover band, or not believing he's a bass player in a Toto cover band? That's a really fair point. Okay. I'd rather think that I'm he's gonna, out there. I'm going to go with the rule of cool. We're going to go with the rule of cool here. And say that as far as this podcast is concerned, Wolverine is canonically a bass player in a Toto cover band. Jack just, fucking, him Jack just fucking left the table. <laughs> I did leave the table. I still got my headset on, but I couldn't be around people who believe such a thing. Jack's like, fuck this shit. <laughs> player in a Toto cover band. I'm like, I'm out, dude. This <laughs> <show's sucked." laughs> um, I'm going to make an insight check on that. <laughs> You just say you're going to Google history. it. Like you're allowed to just say you're going to Google things. Yeah, it's a history check. <laughs> uh, some other really cool things with the with the dragon casualty background. Um, so you do get a disfigurement. And obviously you can roll for these things, but uh, there is an option for elongated claw-like hands. So we can give him his claws straight up. Even the, the suggested characteristics. Some of these are great. Um, driven to escape my past. Slow to trust. His ideals. Uh, I put him as a chaotic good. Because um, I can see him as a chaotic neutral also, but he he really does more often than not have have good in his heart and, and, and is really just trying to be, you know, what he thinks is right. But you know, obviously chaotic. The chaotic ideal here is when I'm uh, when I'm in trouble. The only person I can rely on is myself. And then the flaws. Which one did I have here? It was uh, once I make up my mind, I follow the chosen course of action regardless of consequences. He goes rogue all the time. Sometimes it works. Yeah, I mean, that's that's his thing. Yep, absolutely. 
Um, and the last real thing. It always here works because he never dies. Yeah. He's the only one who can do that. <laughs> uh, and the last thing here is the equipment. And the only thing that really matters here and the only real homebrew reskinning that we need to do is his melee weapons that he gets as a fighter. I gave him scimitars that I would ask the DM very nicely if we can reskin into his claws. Scimitar stats. The D6, um, that seems fair. Yep, D6 yeah, plus... It's, it's uh, not a very high weapon or high yeah, damage weapon. D6 plus strength, um, but it is slashing, which was pretty important. He slashes um, sometimes. I feel like anything like short sword, scimitar, any of those weapons you can kind of throw into claws. Short swords are piercing. It's the same stats, just uh, piercing versus slashing. But with the uh, with with the slasher with the slasher feet that he got from being a uh, ah, that he got from being a variant human, it was I important see. that he got a slashing weapon. If we want to actually homebrew this a little bit, we can do something like you know um, have him built into him. We uh, I thought maybe give it uh, you know make it require maybe a bonus action to engage or disengage. The trade off is that they can't be dropped. Yeah, you can't really drop your own claws. Yeah, you can't can't be dropped. Can't be stolen. But I would say require a, oh, that was it. Uh, require a bonus action to engage or disengage, and obviously they lose the um, the throwable property. I think is uh, is pretty fair, and I don't, I don't think any DM would say no to that. But yeah, that's my Logan. I like that build like a lot. Yeah, it's it's good. it's good. I think it's a very playable build. I think we've all made them pretty playable so far. I, mean, I think we all kind of focused. I think our like the main thing I've seen so far before we get to. To, to years down there. <laughs> oh, I can't wait for this one. <laughs> Is that we, we all kind of said like, okay, how do we make claws a viable, like what do we kind of change a little bit of to make it a viable thing? Because I mean, Wolverine at the heart of Wolverine is the claws. I mean, so like you got to pull something from the universe to kind of, you know, give him a slight advantage, you know, like you did. Like I like the thing of, if you're going to do adamantium, having a weapon kind of thrown into claws and taking away like the, you know, thrown and stuff like that. But I feel like maybe making like an action or like a like a free action to like retract or like push them out would be like a cool feature too. So it takes yeah, like a I, little bit I, of I time. To bonus like, action. Yeah, like they're usually instantaneous, but I feel like just from a D and D standpoint, instantaneous is almost a little overpowered. Like you should have to use a bonus action to like throw them out there and start fighting. I mean, an entire round lasts six seconds, no matter how many people are in it. So, yeah, yeah, so, so it's, it's yeah. Take a, a bonus action at least. Yeah, even no, then, like, like, so, like six seconds is about 12 times the amount of time it takes for him to actually engage his claws. Yeah, I liked a little bit of a different backstory, too. Like, he kind of went, like, a little off with it. Like, I enjoyed how that worked out. Yeah, I was just digging through interesting backgrounds, and this was perfect. I think the Dragon Casualty works. I would be remiss if I did not point out that that is Adventurer's League content and not official Curse of Strahd Wizards of the Coast material. Oh, um, I, that's, that's just the only reason I was confused. Cause I've, I've been running that campaign for four and a half months. I've read that book cover to cover. And the only background that comes with it is haunted one. There is a PDF that has six additional backgrounds that are able to be used in tournament play. Um, if you're running curse of Strahd, but okay. Yeah. <coughs> Nerd. Oh, whew, boy. <laughs> all right. The season <laughs> allergies are really acting up on me right now. Oh, do you Jeez need to Hey man. Like I said, I don't have the Strahd uh, stuff on, on, on D&D Beyond here, so yeah. I just had to rely on Googling and yeah, no, I following like. that chain. Yeah, Grog said it. It was, it was my cat. It, was, yep. it definitely wasn't me. Yeah, he's allergic yeah. to himself. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's just a weird thing, you know? Sometimes yeah. it'd be like that. When a cat dander <laughs> Some, gets in yeah. your nose, you gotta sneeze. You gotta cough. Little, little column A, little column B. Dickhead! <laughs> <laughs> You don't have Sorry. any pets. You can't get away with it. No, I don't. I don't because uh, it's for one of one of two reasons. Either one you can pick. Either I'm a sociopath or I don't have the money to support an animal. Well, I'm Either a way. sociopath and here he is. Oh. Cats are sociopaths. Yeah, that's why we get along so well. <laughs> I, I will say right now, I've loved all the builds so far. I'm very intrigued in how you made your build. Yes. Just, yeah, just what you got. Is, uh, so, so what I did. Um, <laughs> what did you do? I went, I went in a very opposite direction here and I decided not to make a, a faithful adaption of Wolverine, but I decided to, not to make Wolverine, <laughs> but to, but to reimagine what Wolverine would be Here's like. Here's my character from the other campaign. I just called yeah. him Wolverine. <laughs> you right. name. We made no, him a I female mean, half elf. I took it in a different direction as in like, what would Wolverine be like had he been born in the Forgotten Realms as opposed to in the Marvel Universe? Because they don't have Weapon X or Mm -hmm. Adamantium or shit like that in Forgotten Realms. So I wanted to make him 
an actual piece of, of a setting. So I came up with a hill dwarf named Logier, who is a warlock uh, whose patron is the Undying. So I was running through on my dndbeyond.com character sheet. Hashtag. <laughs> uh, he's level 10, has HP of 101, which we'll get to uh, with his stats. Um, I wanted to make a really con-heavy uh, warlock to accommodate, you know, Wolverine's toughness and healing ability and to account for the fact that he doesn't have proficiency with uh, anything beyond light armor. So stats, strength 18, uh, dex 14, con 19, uh, intelligence 8 to take the minus one. Uh, but his wisdom and charisma are both at 17, which I did because while he may not be the most traditionally wisest person, Wolverine is extremely perceptive, uh, can be insightful, uh, is extremely adept at survival, which are all wisdom traits. And, uh, you know, even though he's not warm and cuddly and fun to be around, you know, charisma can manifest in several different ways. And also it's a warlock, so he needs to have high charisma to be even remotely playable. Has advantage on saving throws against poison and disease as a dwarf trait. So far, so good. Uh, Skill proficiencies in athletics, intimidation, perception, and nature. Uh, just for, you know, from, I figured as somebody that lived in the wild so far, I didn't honestly didn't even think to take survival because as Jason said earlier, I think it's a rather useless skill in most 5e campaigns. What do people use survival for in 5e campaigns? Really? Uh, finding food, exp- uh, exploring in wilderness and finding like shelter. And fresh it water. It would just be called hunting almost at that point. That's yeah, really what anyone ever uses it that, for. Yeah. It was broken down into a few different things back in like, you know, three and 3.5. It's, it's your camping skill. That's really what it is. Wolverine is very good at camping. <laughs> He's a very adept camper for sure. He's so good at it. He don't even need no tent. Um, all right. So for, for his background, um, I, first I, I thought about having him as the haunted one. Just like everybody else did, because it's it just, just so it fits like a cookie cutter Wolverine. fit, but yeah. in a good way. Not like oh, it's campy, but it's just you read that and you're like, oh, it's it's that's, that's, Wolverine. Wolverine. that's Wolverine. Oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. And then I was like, nah. So at first I had him <laughs> as uh, <laughs> right. first, I found this. Yeah. I found this absolutely perfect thing. So I said no. <laughs> I don't want it. <laughs> Fuck it. Um, so at first I had him as the far traveler background, which is uh, something from the Sword Coast Adventures guide which I, I thought was fitting with his amnesia angle, you know, like finding himself in an alien land almost without any memory of, you know, how he got there. And a lot of it is tied to like, oh, you know, I love my home, but he doesn't remember what it is. So his personality traits, uh, sarcasm and insults are my weapons of choice. Wolverine. Uh, <laughs> yep. I express affection or contempt in ways that are unfamiliar to others. Wolverine. For his ideal... Uh, I must be careful, for I have no way of telling friend from foe here. Wolverine. His bond is, my freedom is my most precious possession. I'll never let anyone take it from me again. Basic roleplay shit. And then flaws, I pretend not to understand the local language in order to avoid interactions I would rather not have, which is not something that I think is specifically him, but I remember the scene from First Class where uh, Xavier and Magneto go to recruit Logan in the bar, and he just responds with, Go fuck yourself. Yep. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Which I I thought that flaw summed up um, pretty well. Which, which by the way, so in a PG-13 movie, you're allowed to say the F word once. Yep. That's it. And it it cannot be a verb. It has to be, uh, it has to be an exclamation or a, uh, or an adjective. Um, I mean, technically that that, that is a verb. Honestly, if you tell someone to go fuck themselves, you have to, what is the action they're doing? That's a verb. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. Um, It's a verb. It can't be an overtly sexual verb, but you can't say like, Hey, you want to? I fuck. want some fuck. <laughs> Give me some fuck. Yes, daddy. Would you like some mm-hmm. making fuck? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I guess go fuck yourself is okay because that movie is PG thirteen. Real racy, real quick. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, any, anytime uh, anytime a PG thirteen movie uh, actually makes great use of their one fuck is like my favorite thing in the world. Please go. Well, that was what the joke with Deadpool was. Is like, how are they going to use it if they make it PG thirteen with all the fourth wall stuff? Hmm. But yeah, anyway, that's why I did that. And anyway, just over to class features. Um, as the warlock at first level, his other role, the patron is the undying, which at first level has him learn the spare the dying cantrip, which, you know, you can touch someone that's unconscious on death saves and have them pop up with 
one hit point. That's not super applicable at first level, but it becomes applicable with another class feature coming post haste. Uh, let me get to the easier way to read this real quick. Pack magic. Traditionally, he's not a big spellcaster, but I came up with a method for him to use those two spell slots that we will get to when we talk about con, uh, combat. For Eldritch Invocations, he has five. Uh, Thirsting Blade, which allows him to attack with his packed weapon twice instead of once. Fiendish Vigor, uh, he can grant himself, he can cast False Life on himself and grant temporary hit points, uh, adding to the Constitution. Improved Pack Weapon adds plus one bonus to attack and damage rolls on his packed weapon. Uh, Devil Sight, he can see normally in darkness up to 120 feet, advancing his dark vision, something I think Wolverine would have. And then Eldritch Smite, which once per turn, uh, he can expend a spell slot to deal an extra 1d8 force damage to the target, plus another 1d8 per level of the spell slot. At 10th level, your spell slots are 5, 5th level, so that's an extra 6d8 he can lay down for one spell slot wow. with a hit. Wow. Balanced. <laughs> it, it's, it's not homebrew. Uh, pack boon, 3rd level, pack to the blade, so he has his packed weapon that I did not manifest as claws. Like I said, I'm reimagining him in this world. So he summons a uh, packed longsword, you know, seemingly out of nowhere, similar to Wolverine's claws. And then for combat, I had him take the spell uh, Shadow Blade for his offhand, because at 10th level right now, that also lays down like another 5d8 damage. So it's it's turning him into a berserker, you know, without having to rage. Be a berserker. Or, yeah, mm. be a barbarian at all. I just thought it was an interesting way to, uh, you know, start building a warlock that doesn't actually cast any of their spells besides like summoning a weapon. That's really awesome, actually. Yeah. Fourth level, I took a feat fighting initiative to grant him the two weapon fighting fighting style mm -hmm. so he can add his ability modifier damage on his offhand. Fifth level, he can attack twice. Uh, sixth level, defy death. This is where we start to get into the fun Wolverine stuff. Uh, starting at sixth level, he can give himself vitality when he cheats death or when he helps someone else cheat it. He regains hit points equal to 1d8 plus his constitution modifier, which is plus four. Uh, when he succeeds on a death saving throw or when he stabilizes a creature with spare the dying. So that's how I decided to adapt his uh, regeneration in the long run, along with the dwarven constitution like trait from being a dwarf where it just adds extra HP every time you level. You can use that once and before a long rest, uh, eighth level ability score improvement, I upped his strength by two, up to 18, so he can kill people better. And then at 10th level with the <laughs> undying, the undying nature trait, which is why I had him to 10, because this is what I think makes him Wolverine in this world. Uh, he can hold his breath indefinitely. He doesn't require food, water, or sleep. Uh, and in addition, he ages at a slower rate for every 10 years that pass. He only ages one year, and he is immune to being magically aged. Damn. I didn't know Wolverine was a warlock. <laughs> but now I can't see I, him as anything else. Like that, I know. That's, Holy yeah, shit. That's, I, I thought that could be close. I was between this and like Hexblade, but I didn't think the uh, curses really you know, applied to Wolverine too much. But yeah, the undying, it, it, I think by 20th level, yeah, he just basically becomes ageless and... Can't die. <laughs> yeah, and just lays down massive amounts of hurt like he almost becomes one punch man yeah i mean oh, no, that's that's the logical end result of all D, &D, D, D uh characters i think is anime protagonists but mm -hmm. yeah pretty much we should do a uh we should do a satima challenge uh to try to make one punch man without taking a single level of monk pass <laughs> all right would, baby. <laughs> that's not I would, I would think, uh, <laughs> just berserker barbarian because at like 18th level your strength goes up to 24 yeah, I guess. Yeah, so you just punch the hell out of everything. Okay, yeah. fine, fine. Or just any class with a, a we'll, belt we'll of fire giant. We'll find something more interesting. 25 then. strength. <laughs> <laughs> I like that warlock build, though. I think it's a neat thing. Like, okay, what if he yeah. wasn't Wolverine in like our multi, like our universe? Like, what if he was Wolverine in the D&D campaign? Yeah, so he's just a tiny little dwarf that looks exactly like Hugh Jackman, except he's only like four foot five. Just so coming at you Jackman. with so exactly like you, Jackman. Yeah. <laughs> Just coming at you with ethereal swords that between the two attacks and the shadow blade, I think it's something like like fifteen or sixteen d eight. Uh, if he blows like all the spell slots on that, on that one round, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you pretty much burn like everything if you use. Well, that, you, though. he only has two spell slots, so yeah, it's the first the first turn he uses the action to you, summon you the long sword. Mini, you, you do it on mini bosses when you know you're about to rest. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So like yeah, I use this. Now what? So yeah, on your like, second turn, you blow your, your last spell slot to just 
fucking Annihilate murder him. or whatever you're attacking. Yeah. You know your D&D night runs from 7 o'clock to 10 o'clock and it's like 945. Go ahead like, and right. your spell slot. It's time. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to use my shadow blade and I'm, I'm going to attack twice with my packed weapon and once with my shadow blade. Oh, crits. Yay. What's cool is gone. like it's tangentially a Wolverine build. Yeah. Uh, where like if you if you take the time to like tell them it's like, yeah, this is based on Wolverine, but like in in like this kind of universe, it makes sense. Um, mm-hmm. while still being like what sounds like a really fun character to play. Yeah, I, I would I would enjoy playing. I'm Any, probably gonna anytime use you're about to DM be like, uh, at this point. Anytime you're about to be like, okay, roll for this, okay, it hits, cool. Let me just roll up damage, and it sounds like this. Yeah, well that's me yeah. in my level nine <laughs> rogue too, like with sneak attack, just like okay. Especially yep. on a crit when you double it. Can Just, I borrow someone's dice? <laughs> I only brought 30. <laughs> Guys, I only have like 20 D8s. I need more. <laughs> Just the dread of hearing that and the attack is against you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hearing a whole bunch of dice roll like from behind the DM screen is like, uh-oh. Oh, I hate that. <laughs> That's my, my thing in the world to do to my players. Uh, campaign that uh, that Jack was running for us. He's like, uh, it's like, right, uh, roll a, uh, no, roll a stealth check. It's like, uh, it's only like a six. Okay, hang on. Roll, 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 roll. Like, like, ah, clack, 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 There was a lot of things. I actually, speaking of just pulling from that campaign, I almost made sort of like a monster character version of Wolverine. So I almost made him the, um, uh, what is it? The Draugr, the, like a Draugr zombie almost. So you're like a dwarf. Okay. zombie kind of and just try to roll that into a character because they can't like being able to like if you can saving throw like you just don't die yeah that's nice but right yeah but then said so i went with half work because you know vanilla jason i like that we kind of almost built the same character <laughs> i mean it was it was fitting i mean that's you, you you picked a class and race that kind of just was wolverine yeah they could be yeah no, that was uh very creative that was awesome now we got to so make that- them fight Oh yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do some. Uh, we're gonna oh, do I some don't want to fight that episodes. warlock. Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh, I can't nah, wait nah, to fight that I'm warlock. I can't good. wait to fight that thing. I don't care if I get obliterated. It's gonna be great. I'm gonna go out and blaze of glory. Whoever he takes first was, is screwed, but everyone else will be fine. Else, I guess. <laughs> All right, I forgot. So, I also gave him vampiric touch to regenerate HP. Of course which, you did. Ah, there's healing factor. Because why not? You just gotta knock him out and then run. Yeah, yeah, much. you gotta hold, hold wow, creature. Not, he's not, he's not the stick and run type, though. That's bad role play. <laughs> there's got, there's got to be a tactic in there somewhere. Yeah, but dying as Wolverine is also bad role play. Yeah, yeah, fair. <laughs> but wanting to die, that's good Wolverine role play. Oh yeah, <laughs> good. Yeah, not caring about the danger and running into that battle face first. That's Wolverine role play. Mm-hmm. My favorite way to play. Yeah, yeah, that would be a, just, quite the unhinged PvP. Just, what we'll do you mean check for <laughs> traps? I'm not checking for traps. <laughs> Your mom checks for traps and boom, trap explodes. That's usually how it goes. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I will, however, happen. if there are two chests, you always throw a rock at them. Mm-hmm. Just in case. Oh, God. I don't know why I like just saying your mom checks for traps. Now I just want to roll like a frat boy, that, like a frat boy rogue. Like, <laughs> your mom checks for traps. <laughs> They're just going in and doing stuff. <laughs> my God. Um, oh, my God. Let's roll up frat boys next time. <laughs> Let's do it. I that, roll some bros. We're gonna we're gonna brainstorm what to do next. Um, so they're all bards. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a couple ideas for what the next episode is going to be. We have to uh, discuss offline what the next one is is going to be. Uh, did you guys make uh, you guys made these all on D and D Beyond or something similar? I did. Josie, yeah, I made a, mine on D and D Beyond. Josie, you have a PDF for this. D Beyond. Cool. So, uh, guys, send me the PDFs. Uh, I'm going to put the PDFs of these characters in a Dropbox file, and we're going to put the link to that in the uh, show notes and YouTube description for this podcast. So if you want to check out what our final builds look like, you can go ahead and download those PDFs right from here. Nice. That's all I got today. You guys, uh, how you guys feeling? You guys, you learned a lot about Wolverine today or Josie last night whenever you you did all that research? (laughs) The most Wolverine. I didn't think there was going to be a history podcast. So thank you, Josie. Oh, if I'm involved, you're always going to get at least 20 minutes of backstory. Beautiful. Cause I'm a super. All I know is what Hugh Jackman looks like in 2021. I think he might be ageless. So you're probably right. Ah, he's Him and Paul Rudd. Oh yeah. Him and Paul. Yeah. Keanu Reeves. 
It's a cult. So uh, if you're listening and you have some ideas on uh, not only other characters that we can try to build, but other uh, episode themes that we can work on, go ahead and send your ideas. You can either leave them in the YouTube comments or you can email them to us at uh, curmudgeonsanddragonspod at gmail.com. We'll check that. And uh, that's uh, that's pretty much all I got today. Guys, thanks for uh, thanks for joining yeah. the round table. It was a great time. Yes. Yes. How are you saying? I do, friends. I'll see you soon. All right. You guys are all out of initiative. You can go back to your normal role play that we call life. We'll see you next time. Thanks, guys. Later, everyone. Thank you for listening to Curmudgeons and Dragons. Our hosts are Jason Portizo, Justin Franco, Jack O'Connell, and Josie Diaz. Produced and edited by Jason Portizo. Theme music is Crunk Night by Kevin McLeod. Link to the song and license information can be found in the podcast show notes and YouTube description. If you like what you heard, please subscribe and leave a rating. Curmudgeons and Dragons is a JTP audio production. Practice safe adventuring, and remember, don't trust the bard with a twinkle in his eye. JTP Audio Podcast. Thanks for listening.